Our first caller is Olivia from Florida. Hi, Olivia. How can we help you? Hi, guys. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm really excited to be here. Um, I just wanted to say thank you and a quick testament to how awesome you guys are and how much you know your stuff. My fiance was a long distance runner for years, ran for a D1 school, would run like 100 miles a week, said he would never give up running. I hate running. So I was like, let me get, let me get you hooked on mind pump and weightlifting. <laughs> so I converted real. him over. We ran anabolic together and this guy just hit 225 for bench in like three months of training. And wow. I'm still struggling to do a plate. So, yeah. but it's fine. <laughs> wow. That's but, awesome. Yeah, so I just want to say thank you guys for that. Cause now I don't have to go on runs with them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> awesome. No problem. Okay, so I'll give some background info with my question because I think it'll make a little bit more sense. But basically, my question is how I can train around a busy schedule while maintaining strength gains and compound lifts. So I'm 23, 5'2", about 125 pounds. I ran anabolic from January to March and I loved it. Increased my strength in all the big three lifts and definitely put on muscle, especially in my quads and glutes because I need to get new scrub pants and jeans now. Um, I'm a veterinary medicine student and I'm starting clinical rotations and we rotate through different specialties in the hospital every two weeks. So starting Monday, I'll be rotating through our medicine specialty, which is pretty time consuming. The hours are about 6 30 AM or earlier to like 7, 7 30 PM or later, depending on the caseload. Um, and I'll be on that for four weeks, Monday through Friday and possibly weekends. And then I get a four week break of a more normal schedule, like eight to six. And then I'll have another four weeks going through surgery, which is the same as medicine, like kind of 6 a.m. to like 7 or 8 p.m. Um, so I won't really have time to commit to foundational workouts on those days. I wanted to start performance because I know the flow is typically anabolic performance and then aesthetic. And also I haven't trained performance style in probably about a year and a half, two years. And I've been training full body style since January. And before that, I spent a whole year training split style. So I feel like my body probably would benefit from that challenge, but I just can't really start that until later in the fall. And then I figured I could do aesthetic in the spring when my schedule lightens up a little bit. So for the time being, I wanted to get your guys' advice on how I can continue to challenge my body in new ways, especially while not losing strength in my compound lifts, because um, I'm kind of worried about that a little bit. Yeah, this is with e easy answer, Olivia. We have a program that would be perfect, perfect for you. Maps 15, do the advanced okay. version. Basically, yeah. you'd be doing about 20 to 25 minutes a day uh, of compound lifts uh, and exercises. So you show up the gym or if you have a barbell at home, about 20 to 25 minutes every day, you're doing maybe two exercises and you're not just going to keep your gains. You're probably going to get stronger by following that. As long as the nutrition is good and as long as you're getting good sleep, I know it's stressful what you're about to do, so that could always yeah. throw a wrench. But mm -hmm. you're gonna, you'll love it. You're gonna be, and then when you're ready to do a more traditional workout, um, then I would switch to mass performance. But mass fifteen advanced version, done deal. Mm -hmm. It's centered around two com two compound lifts a day, basically. And so, and the way you can run it. So if it's a really busy, stressful week. You can keep the workouts just short, the 15, 20 minutes. If you find a day where you have a day off or you're well rested, you can actually combine the next workout together. So if you want, if you want to run it for 40 minutes, we, we wrote it in a way where you could stack it too. So it's like, you can have that flexibility of when you're in a time crunch, when you're not quite as rested, you can run just the 15, 20 minute version. When there's times where you're like, Oh, I got a whole, it's a weekend. I don't have any work this weekend. Like I want to do a full hour type of workout, you can combine two of the workouts and run it like that. So there's some flexibility in it, but running that, um, and since you already own performance, the only other thing that I would say potentially to add, if you have like these days where you've got some days off or you're really rested and you're like, I want to do a little more, it'd be mobility stuff because you, okay. are, you recognize that you've already been running kind of a bodybuilder and split type of routine in full body. You're probably neglecting some, some mobility work. And so we have that in performance. So if you want to, you know, add an extra day in there or something where you're doing something, I would do the, the mobility sessions that are in performance to complement maps 15 until you get back to your kind of normal schedule. Yeah. How long have you been working out consistently with strength training? Probably about three years now. You're going to probably get stronger with mass 15 then. You're okay. Yeah. You're probably going to, this is going to, 
it's likely to be not just something that keeps you strong, but you probably are going to see yourself get stronger. That happened to me. Yeah. When we created the program and I ran it, um, I hit uh, new lifts, new lift PRs. Did, and I totally did not anticipate that. So that's probably going to happen. At the very least, you're, you're going to just, you're going to feel good. Yes. The frequency okay. element. Yeah. I think people uh, don't realize like how effective that is and just how much you can get just enough and then recover and then just keep that momentum going. But uh, it, it's definitely not just a, a preservation type of a, a, of a workout routine. It's definitely something that a lot of people have gained from. So yeah, the only, the only thing I'd say is just decide if you want to do it in the morning or after work. That's it. Yeah, I'm definitely like a morning movement type of person. I'm so used to like getting up at like 5 a.m. and going to the gym. Um, and I feel like if I don't get that movement and if I don't feel like I'm lifting as heavy or pushing myself the way I want to, I'll tend to like freak out and I'll want to overcorrect for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, because I have some bands at home, so I didn't know if I should just switch to bands to save time mm -hmm. in the mornings. Like if, if there's a morning where I have to be there at like 5.30 or 6, I was like, well, maybe I could do some bands. But I know like long term i would just be itching to get back and like lift yeah. some heavy stuff olivia so it would literally, take a lot for me to literally that. this is what you do okay literally you shower before this is a 20 minute workout okay so you're not even gonna sweat okay. much shower get get everything set up drive to the gym do your 20 minute maps 15 workout and then go straight mm -hmm. to work okay yep you'll that be makes set sense. and yep. so for those um the maps 15 workouts i also have prime so i do like a couple just movements beforehand before yeah. I've been doing my lifts and sometimes that takes me like 10 to 15 minutes would I just be able to cut that out and just go straight into the lifts it depends how good your movement patterns are mm -hmm. um so if you've got really good movement patterns and the exercises are not ones that are like really challenging for you to get into you mm -hmm. could do one or two warm up sets of an exercise and then okay. you're going to be okay um the I'll people that that yeah people it, that wouldn't work if you're like man when I squat I get hip pain or I really need to make sure I could deadlift right because I tend to hurt myself. In that case, I would say, you know, make sure you do the priming. But if, yeah. if you feel good and you're okay, like a, one or two sets of warm up and get into the workout. You, you can even it. just reduce it down to one of those mobility exercises and do that beforehand. Okay. You know, the most effective one that you need. And then um, two, like throughout the day, it's going to be just as effective if you find a moment uh, to just perform that like for five minutes or something to break up, you know, whatever you're doing throughout the day, that's going to, play uh that's going to do very well for you okay that makes sense i'll probably be able to do the um like warm-up sets maybe just like drop the weight a little bit to connect to the yep. muscle and then go through it that's there it you know. yep. exactly cool so if you, awesome. don't, if you don't have mass 15 we'll send that to you okay oh awesome thank you guys so much no right, problem when are you getting married by the way oh um 2025 i want to graduate vet school first and get all my ducks in a row all right <laughs> good smart. for you smart yeah congratulations get it thank you thanks thank you. guys so much you all got right. it yeah, you know what's funny? We we wrote Mass 15, right? And uh, how many DMs do we get from people who are like, I didn't think I'd hit PR. Yeah. I didn't think I'd build muscle. Like, this is crazy. All the time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I keep getting them. Yeah, it's strange. And, and again, I think that people underestimate uh, the frequency yep. component. I also think it highlights something else that we have communicated on this podcast, and we've admitted ourselves that we're guilty of this, is obviously if you listen to a fitness podcast, you probably like, fitness yeah. into it, right? You're <laughs> yeah, probably, and, I hope so. and probably a good percentage are even probably fitness fanatics like us. They could and, benefit from, and we tend less. to, we <laughs> tend to overreach, sure. uh, and overtrain, uh, and not count all the other stress in our life. Family member dies, school test work grinding like crazy. Right. Oh, and then I'm crushing the gym too. And it's like, you know, I think a lot of people didn't realize, uh, that maybe scaling back the workout, that would not hinder the results. In fact, it ended up accelerating a lot of people. You know, she brought up something else that we we don't talk too much that about, like an example of like where I cut out like my mobility stuff. And I think you guys answered it uh, perfect. And it's like, so if I'm if I'm gonna squat, uh, and you said it, so like that's a movement pattern where I have to do combat stretch. Mm -hmm. I've got to do like a quick yeah. zone one thing and prime my upper back to. to to, to perform a really otherwise my low back will be feeling it my hips will be feeling it and i'll pay for it afterwards it's like it's a non-negotiable that but i can go into a deadlift cold 
Hmm. I can go into even overhead. Now, does that mean that I wouldn't benefit from doing prime movements? Absolutely, I would benefit, but I could go into those movements. You could cold. warm up with the movement. That's right. There's yeah. certain movements that are just, I absolutely have to prime in order to get myself in a favorable position. Then there's other movements that I can, it's, it would be ideal for me still to prime. And if I have the time, I'm definitely doing it. But if that's something where I'm like, shit, I'm crunched on time. It's okay. I'm deadlifting today. I can get right into that movement. Mm -hmm. So. 